Welcome back to Development Book Club. Today we have a new book, which is King, Warrior, Magician, Lover. Subtitle, Rediscovering the Archetypes of the Mature Masculine by Robert Moore and Douglas Gillette. Today we're just going to crack into the introduction in the first chapter or two of the book. <clears throat> Let's hop in with King, Warrior, Magician, Lover. There's a Jungian background to the, the authors, or they're Jungian psychoanalysts, psychologists, and their stated purpose of the book is follows. Our purpose in writing this book, however, has been to offer men, men, a simplified and readable outline or an operator's manual for the male psyche. Reading this book should help you understand your strengths and weaknesses as a man and provide you with a map to the territories of the masculine, of masculine selfhood that you still need to explore, need to explore. I would add that if you are not a man and you have a man that you care about in your life, this will help you understand him more fully. The introduction. This book is written was written in 1990 as an answer to the question from a Bill Moyer interview the authors had seen, which was, where are the initiated men of power in today's society? The authors claim that there is a late 20th century crisis in masculine identity. Why is there this crisis? And there are three reasons that they give. Number one, family systems and the breakdown of a traditional family. The weak or absent father cripples both his daughter's and son's abilities to achieve their own gender identity and consequently to relate in an intimate and positive way with members of both their own sex and the opposite sex. Broke down families. Reason number two, which is the disappearance of the ritual process for initiating boys into men. We're left with pseudo-rituals which are mere ceremonial use the term of the author's mere ceremonial. This results in the dominance of boy psychology, which is characterized by abusive and violent acting out behaviors against others, both men and women, as opposed to man psychology, which we'll cover in uh, subsequent videos. And there's a passivity and a weakness to men. Number three, so we have breakdown of the families, disappearance of ritual process. Number three, patriarchy, which in the author's definition is the expression of the immature masculine. This is an attack on the masculine and the feminine, both of their fullnesses or full expressions. We need more of the mature masculine, they say. We must each go on our own deep, on our own to the deep sources of masculinity, energy potentials that lie within all of us. Those are the three reasons for the crisis. Chapter one is the crisis in the masculine ritual process, that second reason from the introduction. And the claim here is that there are pseudo-rituals or pseudo-initiations in our society, but not actual authentic rituals or initiations into manhood. What's the difference? So, for example, uh, they mentioned boot camp and gang initiation as, the two, as two very common initiations in our society or our culture. Why are these pseudo-rituals? Two reasons. First up, these processes, though often highly ritualized, more often than not, initiate the boy into a kind of a skewed masculinity, not a full masculinity, which is stunted and false. The patriarchal notion of manhood, which is abusive of others and often a self as well, is not good. So these pseudo-initiations will not produce actual, like authentic men, because real men are not wantonly violent or hostile to others. Boy psychology is charged with the struggle for dominance over other people, it's sort of the way they look at the world, win-lose, right? in one form or another, and those forms are really, really uh, broad and varied. Man psychology, on the other hand, is nurturing and generative, not wounding or destructive of the self or others. In most cases, uh, reason number two, why are these pseudo? Uh, in most cases, there is not a contained ritual process, which there should be. Two parts to that containment. A is a sacred space. B is a ritual elder who is a wise man or woman who is completely trustworthy for the initiate and can lead them through the process and deliver them intact and enhanced. So intact and enhanced on the other side. Um, so a note about that the sacred space, if that word kind of throws you off, uh, a few things about it. So that for a male initiate, it should be free of the influence of women and it should be a demarcated place, a special place when you can stand sort of sacred where there's nothing else happens there except for this process. Chapter two, covers masculine potentials. And then we'll just cover that really quickly and then we'll finish for today. The claim by the authors here is that deep within every human are blueprints, what we can also call like a hard wiring. And this is like the idea of the calm and positive mature masculine in this case. 
these masculine potentials are referred to as archetypes or primordial images. And the idea here is that even in ducklings, the first thing they see is imprinted upon their brain as a mother caretaker without, and it's not verbal, obviously. Even if that's a cat or a dog or, or any other animal, it's not a duck. And so there's, the idea here is that there's a sort of a blueprint within us that appears in myths, uh, for example, the resurrecting God, and these myths are across cultures that did not have access to each other, as far as anyone can tell. And this field of archetypal psychology, as of the writing of the book in 1990, is in its infancy, was in its infancy. And it hopes to be able to show men how they could access positive archetypal potentials for their own benefit and for that, those of all around them. And of course, the four archetypes are the king, the warrior, the magician, and the lover. And the idea here is that these four archetypes, ideas, expressions of the masculine, are in everybody, let alone men, female. And there's going to be a balance of which one is more expressed. And hopefully, all of them will be expressed appropriately. And we'll cover that, what that looks like. Each, each archetype has a mature boy form of psychology and a mature an immature boy psychology and a mature male psychology. On each level, there are full and imperfect expressions of each one. We'll cover that next time. Thanks for tuning in.